Hey, it's Dave from Bullpen Cycles, and we're back from our various road trips. And there's a pile of boxes in here. It's what you call Christmas in springtime. Christmas in springtime. All these parts that came in while I was away. I get I don't even remember what I ordered. But it's for the various broken bikes here. We'll have to start. Alright, that's nothing. This is called trim shine. And it's very good for detailing your bikes. And I can only find it on Amazon. Trim Shine. Not a paid endorsement. Gotham Cycles. Okay, they're out in Tampa. It's the only place where I could find a rebuild kit for that front brake master cylinder on the four-cylinder Benelli. Master cylinder on the four-cylinder. This came in from Kenny Sykes in California. This is a Reeves Griffin QUB brake pedal. Boy, they sure use enough tape. Okay, so if you remember, the starter solenoid on the Norton rotary was weak. We were tapping it with a hammer to get the bike to run. From Lucas, the Prince of Darkness. And it doesn't swap with like Triumph cars or MG cars because these are different. So, some of these ground to the chassis, and some have an isolated ground. And I think the Norton takes an isolated ground, particularly since this is held on with two sheet metal screws into a plastic inner fender wall. So hopefully that's the right one, and we'll get that Norton rotary going reliably enough for a test ride. This came from a viewer who asked for some help and sent this to me. Royal Enfield Interceptor. 750 Interceptor. I'll put that in my Royal Enfield service manual collection. Thank you, Rex. Ah, okay, so we were talking about a Greaves Griffin. This came from Kenny, I guess he sent it as a gift. There's your Greaves Griffin motocross bike. There's the Desert Scrambler. They also made an Enduro, which I have. Okay, this is stuff for our Fontana Gold Medal. Remember those crummy clutch plates that were all sanded together? Well, we got new clutch plates. Some headlight stuff. Oh. Speedo mount. Remember how we couldn't fit the Speedo on that bike with the wrong headlight? Okay, these are my two carburetors. 
Remember how we had the wrong carburetor on that first thing? That 360 first thing with a mishmash of engine parts. For my Griffin. Oh, that's nice. This is the Enduro with the larger tank, not the MX. Mine was bubbling. This is nice. I wonder if I'll need to coat it just to save it. Cool. This came in from the UK. If you have a TR 5T, that's the Triumph 500 twin cylinder trophy trail. You can't get rear fenders. They had two styles of rear fenders. 73 had a two-piece rear fender that was short with a little black tail extender. And 74 had a one-piece long fender. And in those years, Triumph with all their strikes, labor strikes and shortages and poor sales, Kind of piece together whatever they could. This is a reproduction trophy trail rear fender. And boy, it comes pre drilled with the clips to run the wiring harness 83 4848. That's a Triumph part number. Pre drilled. That's awesome. So if you want to know where to get fenders, this was. Speedwell mud guards. 195 British pounds. Plus shipping. This box is Riahu stuff for my Riahu Ranger. And that bike, for reasons I won't get into on this video been somewhat of a disappointment but uh, I don't blame that on the manufacturer or distributor as of yet we're working on it I'll, that'll probably be another video this is Tigon fuel line I used to be able to buy Tigon by the box now I can only get it by the foot do you know if any of you viewers out there order it by the box? I don't know. Maybe from Parts Unlimited you can get a full box. I think what this is is people selling it by the foot, reselling it. I have not found the original source. I used to be able to get that. So if you know a source to buy this by the full box, let me know. I'm guessing it's Parts Unlimited. This is really nice. I should probably take this into the light so you can get a better view. Remember our aerial square four? Here, let's take this into the light. And my shop's getting full. You guys need to call me about some bikes so I can unload a couple. Can't even walk. Anyway, here's our square four, which you saw. And look at the nice job Painter did on the tank. That was Palm Coast Eddie. You know, like a one week turnaround. that in the fender will really dress up that bike so we are gonna get some bikes together we'll probably 
see if we can get the brakes working on the Benelli. Put the Wankel back together. And go for a test ride. Hopefully later on in this video. We'll get the aerial back together and see how that turned out. I think that's going to be nice. Okay, so we've encountered our first problem already on the Norton. You see, I have what's supposed to be an official genuine Norton part. There's the genuine Norton logo with the Norton part number. Here's my old solenoid. Here's my new solenoid and they're oriented the same way with the mount to our right and the terminals are on different locations now i'm assuming that doesn't matter because this is the primary side these contacts make contact gee these contacts make contact <laughs> These terminals make contact when the small side goes live. So as long as you don't have the battery and the starter connected to the same terminal, that should work. But they're different. But you know, when you order genuine replacement parts, you don't expect to find small differences. I switched the terminals around now if you think about it these are electronically the same except that one side is on the hot side to the battery and the other side it runs to the starter so I'm guessing this is a tab it's an extra hot terminal that goes somewhere because it wouldn't make sense to have it on the starter side that must be the battery side that's my guess well, so it's like the day after Christmas when you have to return all your gifts because that sweater your wife bought you is ugly. You don't want a tie rack and everything else is the wrong size. That's kind of like what we have here. First, with our Norton Wankel, supposedly our correct OEM part that I ordered using the OEM part number. Fresh battery. I confirmed my wiring. Turn the key on. Hit the button. Nothing. Not even a click. I confirmed I'm getting 12 volts to the small coil and the big coil is not making contact. So I contacted Andover Norton and they're having like a powwow over there. I think they had these manufactured and they're wrong. So they're gonna get back to me. In the meantime, I'm gonna wire up something metric, maybe like a Veranda or a Honda start a solenoid zip it in place with a zip tie which then takes us which then takes us to this Benelli all right I got all that to bleed that was the right master cylinder kit my caliper frozen it wouldn't come apart I had to use the grease method now if you haven't seen the grease grease method I can't even say it grease method check my other video that's how you get stuck calipers apart I'll post a link to that but that's what I had to do and these are unique, now look, that's your brake pad and it's bonded to the puck. But if you look, you see that rust, that pitting, these are junk. You can put them on a wire wheel and smooth them out. 
You'll get them to move inside the body, but they're junk. It'll tear your seal, it'll leak. Unfortunately, they don't make these little tiny Brembos anymore. I think I got a line on an aftermarket, maybe a Gramica, that'll fit with the same goofy little pucks. Not throwing that out yet, though, because that might be all we got. Which takes us to our Fonterra. Now, remember the clutch plates on this thing? The thing about Botaco clutches is all the plates are steel. The friction plates, the ones with ears, are steel. And the metal plates, well, obviously they're steel. So basically you got round plates and normally steel plates. But this, that's a Barnett clutch plate. It's different, it's not steel. There's normally five friction plates and six steel plates. But when you're replacing them with the Barnett friction plates, the ones with the ears on them, because they are thicker, I went with four and five. We now have a working clutch. And I patched this tank. Now, I don't know what your opinion is on it. Here's how it came out. I used some resin and some fiberglass shreddings that I clipped up and I put it in there. I don't know if that's a bodge or not. I don't know if I'm happy the way that turned out. It would have been easier just to use some marine JB weld, patch it, and then caswell it. I'm caswelling it now and uh, it doesn't leak, so I was able to wash it out lightly with acetone, which I always do, even on fiberglass. But you don't leave it in there very long, a minute or two is all. First you wash it out with Dawn. I had it filled with Dawn, I shook it vigorously with screws. And then I actually fill it back up with Dawn and stick it in my hot van and drive around for a couple of weeks, it's just for the sloshing motion. Eventually it gets clean and a light acetone bath this is what you do, blue tape followed by duct tape. If you are really concerned about how vigorously you're gonna shake it when it's full of acetone or how water tight the tank is, then you wrap the whole tank in duct tape. I was able to be careful here. It's ready to coat it, which is what we're gonna do next. Which takes us to our Persang. And for that, we gotta go outside. But before we show you the Persang, look at how my aerial came out with my freshly painted tank and matching front fender. Now you saw this run and drive on my previous video I think it was the, the spend the day in the shop tour video look how that improved the bike and here's this Persang which we hope is gonna light up now we've got a 38 millimeter Spanish Amal Mark II jetted for a piston port 360 Persang. And hopefully that'll light up. Oh, and there's one other thing. Remember this topper? I sent the carburetor out. Now normally I don't send carburetors out, but I was unfamiliar with this one and I didn't have a kit and I thought it needed more than a kit. So, it's a Tillotson. I sent it to Jim's Forever. That's in Ohio. I think they're called JM Collectibles now. 
They're really good on small Harleys, Hummers, Toppers, and Italian stuff. And look at how nicely they did this carburetor. All new brass plugs, brass fittings. I didn't have those. Vapor blasted. So that should be ready to go. That's going to be another one that hopefully will fire up before the end of this video. So this is a 360 Persang from Mika McKissimi. I don't think it ever ran, ever. Turns out to be a mishmash of parts, not just a 360 shoved in a 250 frame. It's a total fits of bike, which is okay, especially if you're gonna race it. Let's see if it's gonna go. me oh that hurt oh not my kicking knee my standing knee I'm beginning to hate this bike oh there goes my knee again oh You know what? I'm gonna get a stool to stand on. I don't have to hurt my knee. I think I literally hurt myself there. I just hit the knee the wrong way. <clears throat> well, ow. I'm gonna have to set that down a little bit might have to continue this oh well in the meantime let's caswell this tank let's see how that goes well that kind of takes the wind out of my sails Planning to show you some other bikes. Now we're gonna have to wait. Hopefully my knee will heal up in a day or two. Just when I put weight on it. So we'll let that go. We'll mix this up. This is Caswell Tank Sealer. It's an epoxy. We have this tank very clean. I ordered a couple sets of this when it was available, then it became unavailable during COVID. I'm not sure why. It's still a lot of places out of stock. On fiberglass tanks, I use the clear because it's less noticeable. Sometimes like on a red tank, I'll use the dragon's blood. It comes in two parts. You're supposed to mix them completely and not try to skip. You gotta mix them and pour it right away because it gels up pretty quick. Since it's not rust we're trying to cover up, I'm trying to coat the weak spots of the fiberglass also give it a protective coating for ethanol though i won't ever be putting ethanol in, in it it's probably not so critical that i got every corner inch every little spot covered That's it. We'll see how it turns out. 
No sense you sitting here watching paint dry, huh? So, check back in, in a few days. Maybe I'll have something better. Thanks for watching.